Hey there, my name's Jake and I have one goal in mind. You. Who's writing these? To help you. We're raising our first check today, hopefully. We've raised money before for the startup, but we haven't brought on an investor check. And for the first time, I think it might happen today. We, we've done this about 50 times now, where you sit down, you have the conversation, and then they tell you politely that you're too early, you don't have enough traction, a bunch of other things that we've heard before. I, I know every single play in the book. I know every single trick in the book. I've heard it. I've lived it. I've dreamed it. I have cried through it. And now it's time to close it. We're making this guy conductive. And there's bajillions of people every single year that have chronic pain, injuries, and just shit. Everybody's going through stuff. And we want to help that. So much so that I'm putting my entire life to this. But, no, butts are for sitting. In order to do that, you have to raise money. And... We need more money. So that's what I'm going to do today. You have to have conversations with investors, get turned away from people all the time, and pretty much get bullied a lot. So you have to have pretty thick skin, and I'm starting to look like a crocodile from all this. I mean, look at this. I have battle scars. And this is all from the investing process. Not actually. I burned it on a pizza plate. But you get the idea. In order to raise money, you need a couple of things. Number one, to be super lucky. Number two, to have super thick skin. Number three, to have a sick idea. And number four... The most important, there's not a number four, honestly. It's just the top three. Well, a pretty important and key part is you need to actually raise the money. So we've raised $25,000. We need to raise a million dollars to be able to make this piece of tape conductive and it sends shocks to help block pain. And so people can go do cool stuff like hiking, biking, swimming, playing the piano on a hot air balloon and 6,000 feet in the air next to a guy who's skiing on a ramp in the middle of the sky. Red Bull did that. It's pretty cool. I, I thought it was pretty cool, honestly. We have a mission today. Breakfast, number one. Most important meal of the day, serving up Gary's way. Number two, secure check because we have to keep rocking and rolling with this. Let's go for an adventure. <laughs> Me and this car have been through everything together. I actually was driving on the highway one time. The car literally just died. Like the button started flashing, everything started going. And I, in adult professional fashion, freaked out, screamed, and called my parents. And you know what's scary? The opioid crisis. And you know what we're trying to help fight? The opioid crisis. The whole reason why I'm driving an hour and a half today to have breakfast and potentially get chewed away like a bug is because I want to help the opioid crisis. Well, I don't want to help it. I want to help fight it. So right now, there's over $18 billion per year spent on the opioid crisis in the United States on prescription drugs for people who have chronic pain. And there's 690 million people who go to the doctor for it every single year. And 99% of those people get prescribed some sort of opioid or drug to help fight their chronic pain. And that is a horrifying stat in itself. I'm trying to help fight that. And the way you could do that is you give the same effect of what a pain medicine does to the body to help people be able to get through and do their rehab, but not have the harmful effects, the addictive effects, that pills have on the body. Oh man, I just got honked at. Now I'm going back to my college and I'm pitching to this guy and how a lot of these pitches go is you pitch, you get feedback, yada, yada, yada. It takes a couple weeks, it takes some time. And if you look at my older videos, like I've gone and done these pitches before, you can see it. But what's different about process of pitching to investors that I've learned from pitching to investors and learning from people who have successfully also pitched to investors is you gotta be a dog. Like, what's that stuff that they say in the NFL? Like, they gotta have, you gotta have that dog. You gotta have that dog in you to be able to get any of this done and be able to get to the point we want to. Because a lot of the times when you're pitching, you have to have that dog in you and be able to speak diligently and be able to close these deals. And I never, I realized that I was never even trying to close these deals. I was just going and having these conversations. And they said that the best way to get money, you ask for advice and you get money, or you ask for money and you get advice. For the longest time, I've been asking for advice and I have not been getting money. So that is the dumbest quote ever. I don't even know who came up with that. I pivoted my strategy and we're just gonna start asking for money. And Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Michael Scott also said that, but he stole the quote. So we've done over 40 different investor pitches. So I've reached out to probably almost eight or 900 investors so far. When somebody's going through the idea stage of a product, this is how the process goes. You come up with an idea and you get a co-founder. From there, before you even start working on anything, you wanna ask people what they'll buy. This was something that I learned very early and I was thankful for because a lot of people don't learn this part. Before you start building anything, you have to go and ask people what their pain points are. So for us, before we even started building anything, we were asking people what their problems were with chronic pain, but it's a huge problem that people have around the world. It's like 1.7 billion people have musculoskeletal problems, a lot of big science-y words. It is what it is, but we have a big problem that we wanna solve, and there's a lot of other people trying to solve that problem. So we asked, individuals like what are your major pain points that you're going through right now and then they would tell us well how do you think that those work how would you go about the process of fixing that and what would that look like that would be perfect to you what would be something that you couldn't live without and then you find that pain point 
and then you just start cooking. That's when you start building things that are gonna be helpful to these people, so helpful that once they use it, they couldn't imagine what their life would be without using it again. And that's the goal of what we're building. That's the goal of what anybody wants to build within a company. You're gonna have to spend around $10,000 at least of your own money building something. Sometimes you don't, but that's kind of like the industry average. I spent like $26,000 so far my own money because we had to get it patented. But then the process from there is once you get to the, the prototype stage and you have something that's past the idea stage that you can almost present to people who also see the potential vision of where you wanna go. What you're gonna do from there is you have to bring on external capital. So there's ways that you can start out and do that. The first thing would be getting a grant. So look and see if there's anything around your state, if there's any affiliation. So if you're in college, uh, look at your school. A lot of schools, big schools have angel networks where you can just pitch to a bunch of rich people that went to the school that you went to. You can go through the pitch competition process. So we raised 25,000 through like the biggest national pitch competitions in the world. But if you're out of college, which I'm sure is a lot of people watching this video, then it gets a little bit tougher, but it's not impossible, which is why people continuously do it every single day. You can also go to angel groups, and angel syndicates, and that's the process we're at right now. So you don't wanna pitch ideas to angel syndicates. It's really hard to get them on board. And the difference between an angel group and an angel syndicate is the syndicates invest individually. So it's just a bunch of rich people that come together and have a shark tank that's not filmed, which is, pretty scary because like I walk in there's a bunch of people that were drinking beers and like chilling and I just get up there and pitch and they ask me a bunch of questions and they grill you and they're like okay thanks next and then you just leave I drove 15 hours for 10 minutes there's also angel groups who only invest if there's certain investor interest so like people can invest individually for the syndicates but for this one it's like if you don't have X amount of interest you're not gonna get in you have your friends and family so I don't have a rich family I don't have rich friends but you gotta make connections through the process so friends of friends friends of friends of friends of friends of friends and through that process it makes it a lot easier to bring on money bring on capital and today actually I'm pitching to a friend of a friend of a friend so uh, that's funny that's kind of how the process goes so we kind of know each other but we've never met in person but like we've known each other through people who talk about us and that's how we got to know each other it's pretty much a grind process and the hard part that I've learned about this process is you're essentially trading a nine to five job where a lot of people don't like their jobs and at the end of the day you can go home and relax turn off shut down and do your thing but with something like this is like you're trading a nine to five job for a 24 7 job I over the past three years have changed a lot mentally in the sense that I'm constantly thinking about how I'm growing the business. It's like, I can't enjoy being social with friends. I can't enjoy going out and doing things without having to check my phone to see if I missed a call or an email about opportunities and ways to continue the business. So it makes it really difficult to be able to balance work and life, but it's kind of the price you pay for the life you want to create. What's even scarier is a lot of the time businesses don't work out. So you have to be a certain type of crazy to work to this point and create these type of products. And you have to have a really strong mission. I mean, sometimes people even invest on your why. Like what is the reason you're doing it? Because people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do. It is a grind, it's a process. Like I, I'm driving an hour and a half today for a 10 minute meeting that I don't even know is gonna go well or not. I drove 15 hours for a 10 minute meeting that I didn't know was gonna go well or not. And being able to handle tougher situations and struggling through the situations without taking it out on other people. Because the biggest thing is like, when you're bringing a team with you, you have to be the one who weathers a storm. You have to be the one who goes down with the ship. You have to be the one who's able to navigate the plane in stormy weather. I'm two hours early. It's pretty good. I was getting close to where I was supposed to be and I was like, wait a second, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to meet at 11.45 and I pulled up and it's like, it was like 9.58. <laughs> I was like, I gotta figure out another way to kill some more time and what's a better way to kill time with some coffee? So this is the game plan. We're gonna go to the pitch, we're getting breakfast and I'm gonna close the deal, no more talk, game time. I also realized that I'm closing in on a scary amount of caffeine for the day. I just spent 45 minutes in that Barnes and Noble and like I progressively got shakier and shakier the entire time. Now I have so much freaking pent up dopamine and caffeine inside of me right now. Now it's time. The moment you've all been waiting for, the moment I've been waiting for, the moment I'm pretty nervous about. Honestly, I'm not that nervous anymore. I've done this pitch like a bajillion times and I pitched to rooms as big as 600 people, but you have to say the right thing to the right person. People to rock and roll, get the checks flowing, rocking and rolling, keeping the company going. And I actually just got off the phone with our tape manufacturer too and he's helping us figure out a huge engineering feat that we've been trying to figure out for the last like i don't know year and a half and we might have just solved it while i was in that barnes and noble in starbucks so barnes and noble i don't know what i would do with it but sponsor me because great things happen in barnes and noble
That is not what I thought was going to happen. That just happened. One of the nicest guys I think I've ever met in my entire life. One of those genuine nicest guys. He had some of the craziest accolades I had ever met. And he's somebody that you definitely want to have in your corner when the time comes to it. But we did not get a yes for the investment. <sighs> He had said that his wife had told him that he is capped on investments and like he invested in my friend's company and then after that she was like, you are not allowed to invest anymore. And he, he was a part of the entrepreneurship program at my school and stuff. So it was really nice having the conversation with him. Um, but it wasn't meant to be an investment conversation. It was just more of like a get to know you because we'd, we'd known each other like through other people and we had conversations and stuff. Usually they're like, you have to see if you can push and try and get the closing. And this time I tried to push a little bit. I was like, what would your life, your wife want to see to open the flood doors and uh, let you do it one more time? And he was like, give me more time to my family. And I was like, yeah, well, it's kind of hard for us to do that. Oh man, I drove. This is entrepreneurship in a nutshell, and this entire channel is really showing you what it's like. And this is why they say entrepreneurship is so tough, and it's not built for anybody. Because like it's really easy to be down to the point where you could give up right here. Like you understand you're in a point where it's like, we have to raise money or it's not going to happen. And we have a product that's so close, we need the money to finish it so we can start selling it to people. But I'm not giving up. I'm not going down without a fight. And he did say that like personally, the technology would benefit him. He's like, I use a TENS machine. It's really annoying. And it sounds like what you're doing solves a problem. And I was like, yeah, it does. You want to invest? And he was like, he's like, I just can't. There's two different kinds of people. The ones who stay down when they get knocked down and the ones who get back up with a smile on their face every single time. And those are the people who are the best entrepreneurs. And the one thing I always say is a bend in the road isn't the end of the road unless you feel to make the turn and my steering wheel still works so i'm not going anywhere it's just it's a tough process but that's what all this is entrepreneurship's a tough process it's about getting kicked in the face and getting up and doing it again the next day all right so this is dylan he's one of my good friends he's also one of my interns he's actually working on one of our videos right now what's up guys i'm dylan junior here at westchester at the same time we're building lectra we're also building a YouTube channel. So it's me, Dylan, our two editors, Rat and Tin, Cause, and then we're trying to get another short from editor too. Also, we just figured out that Shane Gillis, the comedian, went to our school at Westchester. So that's where we are right now. And pretty much it's like, here blowing on some steam and working on the next investor because we have like five more pitches coming up so this is one of like the quick ones we got some good life advice um it is what it is you win some you lose some it ain't always home runs just the way life goes gotta keep working you win or you learn we just keep on learning the wins are gonna come soon i appreciate all y'all watching i'll catch you in the next video peace